Image to 3D using AI just keeps getting better and better. You can now get accurate and clean geometry from complex imagery, which acts as a great starting block for your conceptual designs. There are certain techniques that will help you produce better results involving pre- and post-processing of the images and models. We get models like the ones shown here. I'll cover some of these techniques, and in addition, I'll take you through both a cloud and local workflow. So let's jump into it. The 3D generation works best with clean geometric forms. No background and unnecessary details, such as people, furniture, and trees. This will be done through an image-to-image -image stylization workflow. There are many ways to do this, including using mid-journey style reference techniques or in ComfyUI using control nets. I will be using the Flux Context Dev in ComfyUI, as it is much quicker and simpler workload and is great at doing this kind of work. I have loaded up here a standard workflow for Flux Context, which you can find in the description below. I've gone over this workflow in detail in my previous video, so you can check that out. Just make sure that you have the correct models loaded in step one. The case sampler, set it between 20 and 30 to control the quality and the time to generate. So drop in the main image for the input here in step two. And what is most important is the prompt. Since we want to focus on just clean architectural forms, use words and phrases such as monochrome architectural model and clean geometry. I'm going to use convert this image into a clean monochrome architectural model with no textures, ambient lighting, and clean smooth geometry by removing details such as people, railings, background, and trees. You want to ask it to remove certain features in the image such as furniture and foreground, as this will just create noise in 3D. You may need to run this a few times until you get the clean image you want. But here you can see that the towers, organic form, and platforms are out very well. Now with this, you can generate a 3D model from the one image. But for extra quality, you can also generate multiple views of the model. Once you're happy with your images, you can move on to the 3D generation. Starting with the cloud version, I'll be using the Hanyuan 2.5 model. This produces the best quality by far and you can currently create 20 free generations a day. Just make sure you use the official website, which I'll provide in links below. It is in Chinese, but with Google Translate, you can make a free account and still use it. And over in the left tab, you can drop in your single image or multiple images. Then the model we want is a Honeywell 2.5. If a newer one gets released or developed, just switch to those. Here you can also control the number of mesh faces and the texture style. But we are not interested in the textures, as the purpose of this workflow is to create a clean base model which we can further develop. Once you hit this, it will take generally around 5 minutes to create. And with that, you get this incredible model which has covered all the angles, even made these podiums continuous and complete, even though in the reference image it was slightly cut off. The recesses and organic cuts around the windows also look amazing. You can download this in a wide range of formats. I'll use OBJ. And next, we can go on to the 3D model processing. Mainstream 3D modeling software such as 3ds Max and Blender have tools for retopologizing. I'll be using Rhino 3D, as in the latest Rhino 8. They have a great new tool to manipulate and clean these forms. So in Rhino, you can drag and drop your OBJ into the scene. And in the import options of the OBJ, make sure you select map OBJY to Rhino Z. Otherwise, your model will import sideways. In wireframe view, you can see this is very detailed, but very dense. In Arctic mode, you see how beautiful and smooth it is. It keeps the form well, but this will be a nightmare to manipulate like this. Another issue is that AI model generation does not care about scale. So let's move to the top view. I'll use the scale command, set a scale point, and a scale factor of around 100. I'll also type in units in the command, and change the units to meter, make it easier to understand. Now if I measure this window opening, I can see it is around 4 meters, it's still a bit high, but let's keep it for now, so we can focus on the geometry. There's one magical command in Rhino 8 that will rationalize this mesh. It is called quad remesh. There are a couple of very powerful options in this command. I'll go through the key ones. So target edge length 
it controls the average size of the mesh edges. So for a 10 meter cube, 0.5 will give you a fine detail, or two will make it more rough. What count? It sets the number of bases for the entire mesh. So high numbers mean more detailed mesh. Then adaptive quad count. When enabled, it automatically determines the optimal mesh density based on the service curvature. So areas with more curvature gets denser triangulation. So this is very intelligent. What we also want is at the bottom to check the create sub D. As this will allow us to intuitively manipulate organic forms. Click OK. This may take a few minutes to calculate for a complex shape. And with this, you have a clean sub D. I'll drag it out from the original position. And you can already see the difference between the geometries. If I change to Arctic mode, you see that I've lost some details. So maybe I should have increased the quad count here. If I go back to shade view, the advantage is now that I can easily manipulate these geometries to extend and reshape. This can be done on the vertex points of the quad or the quads themselves. I press tab, I can switch between smooth and polygon mode. If you hold control and shift together and click on your face, you can move the gizmo of the selected face. So everything is 100% editable. Now to go a step further, you can create sections and other illustrations on this. You can use the command offset sub D add some thickness to the shell. In the option, select solid, offset distance, and flip the offset to be inward. I'll drag this copy to the side so we can do some comparisons. I'll make a clipping plane, select the vertical and draw one straight up. In this single shell model, you can see that the inside of the model is also very clean. We could add in floors and more internal details to create sections for me. I'll move the clipping plane to the offset model. And since the walls have some thickness, you can create clearer diagrams as the edges will have more definition. And Spino 8 also has some great section tools. So you can try those out as well. For the final part of the video, I will touch upon doing this locally. Currently, ComfyUI only supports the Honeyone 2 and 2.1 models, so you'll get better quality results with the online 2.5 model. I'm sure in the future they'll add these models so you can switch them out then. For now, I suggest using the Hanyuan 2 MultiView model. This workflow you can find in the description below. You can also check out how to install and use this from a previous video. This workflow produces textures and UVs, but we don't need this as we'll focus only on a geometry. And to be honest, the textures are also a bit too complex for large architectural models at this point and difficult to edit. So let's press Control and drag the mouse to select the bottom half of the workflow, right click and press Bypass. This workflow does support single image and multi-image workflows. So if you just have one image, you can deactivate the other views in the same way by right clicking and bypassing. Now drag and drop in the white processed image. There's a node here which removes the background and you can right click on the preview node and press Q selector to just process this. Over to the right, just make sure you're using the Honeyone 2 multi-view model. And in the generate mesh, I would recommend 50 steps for good quality. And in the decode node, I'll use 512. Any higher than this, it requires much higher GPU usage and you crash it. Post process mesh also controls how many faces it generates. So for more denser and deeper meshes, you can double this number. Now you can press run. And without a texture generation, it only takes two or three minutes to create. You can see that this mesh looks less smoother than the 2.5 version. However, it has better details actually for the podiums and levels. Try this with other multi-views. You could generate these by creating a 360 video and extracting the frames, as I've done in my previous video. You could also use the Flux Context Pro model and ask to generate different angles of the same subject, or even using a multi-view AI model. So there's many ways to do this. And then in the Hanyuan model, you just right click and press bypass again to activate, then drag in other JPEGs. You run this again, which will add more details based on those views. And in the same way, you can export the OBJ and process it in Rhino. 
a Hanyuan 3D model is very powerful, and newer models will undoubtedly be released. And they will follow similar workflows, so you can adapt them for these. AI 3D generation is a domain which I'm most excited about. I'll keep you updated as progresses and hope you enjoy trying out these workflows.